Hi, everybody, and welcome to our 2021 virtual open house. Um, obviously, this is something we like to do in person every year, uh, but with COVID, we're unable to do that. So we're bringing to you our, some information, some webinars uh, that we're going to do virtually. Uh, today is the first of four that we're going to do. Uh, today is about marketing. Uh, we're calling, we call it Get the Scoop, which is marketing for your frozen dessert business. I'm Rob Romarino here with Century Equipment. Um, we are going to have this event uh, that we can send out to you. So if you miss any part of it or have any um, uh, thing that you, you forgot to write down, don't worry about it. We're going to be able to stream it out. A couple things about the seminar. There is a little bit of delay from what we say to kind of what we, we type. You see that there's a chat on your right. Feel free to chat questions during the seminar. I'll get to them uh, either during the presentation or afterwards. I want to make sure that this is kind of free flowing. And as, as things come up, uh, if you have questions or comments, uh, we address those. Uh, so feel free to use the chat any way you can. Um, and then, I'll, like I said, during the presentation, I'll address it. Uh, but if there is a, like a five, 10 second delay, don't worry. It's just some of the, 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 um, the software that, that we use. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today is all about marketing, and, it, and it's a passion of mine personally. It's, it's something that we really try to work with our customers here at Century. Marketing is so important for the, the frozen dessert stores that we work with. And the question is, why, why, do, why is marketing important? Well, it, it's all about getting more customers, right? We get more customers, we make more money. Additionally, it's about getting more customer visits. If every one of your existing customers comes just one more time a month, you're going to make a lot more money. Um, so when we look at marketing, we, we try to say, okay, how can we get more customers and how can we get more customers to come more often? Um, first, before we get into all that, let's just look at the current state of the market. Obviously, COVID-19 is, is affected what we do here in our, in our open house, and it's affected a lot of people and a lot of businesses. How has it affected you know, the ice cream business and the ice cream stores. Well, ice cream sales in the U.S. were up 13% in 2020 versus 2019. Novelty sales, uh, take-home products, up 16%. It's an incredible, incredible increase in sales for our industry. Uh, but, so why have the sales increased? Well, unfortunately, COVID has, has put a cloud over everything. People really haven't been able to travel, haven't been able to go anywhere. They're stuck in their home and they're stuck in their community. That has caused a lot of people to take advantage of the community ice cream stores. And um, in community ice cream stores, people in the community, more visits to the stores, you've seen sales go up. From a psychological standpoint, you know, the, with the uncertainty of COVID-19, many consumers, they, they turn to kind of what's familiar to them, what's, what's comforting, what, what those indulgencies that, that give them a sense of, of happiness. Guess what? Ice cream and desserts are that. Uh, people have turned to ice cream and desserts to just give them a sense of warmth and kind of a, of a dark time. 51% um, in a recent survey by Food and Beverage Magazine, 51% of consumers associate ice cream with comfort. It is the ultimate, one of the ultimate comfort foods. And at a time where it's tough and everything's serious and there's a lot of negativity um, surrounding what's going on out there. Well, we, we, they turn to ice cream to give them a little sense of comfort. Um, and look, simply put, ice customers are looking for a, a way to treat themselves. You know, whether they had a bad day or a good day, people want to treat themselves. And with COVID-19, it was emotionally exhausting times for a lot of people. So getting an ice cream cone, getting a dessert, getting an Italian ice, getting a gelato, whatever it is that you're selling, um, people really took advantage of that. Another poll conducted by a COVID research firm showed that 71% of consumers were gravitating to things that reminded them of their past and even their childhood. Uh, so the neighborhood dessert shop, if, you had a, if you're in a shop and you're in an area where you, you're generational to the point where you've been there for a long time, you really saw, I guarantee you saw an influx of sales because people during these times, during COVID, really gravitated towards the familiarity um, of, of a reminding of when things were, were a little bit better. Also, what contributed to the, to the increase in sales were just the easy access of an ice cream store. A lot of us are walk-up windows, which um, were just a safe way for people to access your product. Drive-throughs saw a tremendous upkick in sales because, again, another safe way to access product. Even stores that were walk-in, 
the light walk in where it wasn't huge crowds and you can kind of meter uh, the amount of people that can come in saw an, uh, an increase in sales because of the, the, the way you were serving product. And lastly, it, ice cream has always been an inexpensive treat. It's not a huge uh, financial burden on customers to take their family to get an ice cream cone. Uh, so when you look at a recession, you've seen it, ice cream be recession proof for years. We've been doing this for 40 years. During downtimes in the economics when people have less discretionary income, ice cream sales really didn't, never suffered because it was inexpensive. Well, now it proved to be a little pandemic proof as well. So I hope that you were a business that did see an increase in sales. If you did, great. Um, if you didn't, well, we can look at it and analyze and un try to understand why uh, so we can, we can help. Uh, there, obviously, we deal with a lot of different non-ice cream stores, restaurants, schools. I mean, they were hit hard. Um, but as we look at some positives, we, before we look at marketing and how we need to market and how we can increase customers and sales, we need to understand why, why that stuff went up. So um, how do you continue the momentum? How do we continue the momentum if you did have momentum? Or how do we, how do we capitalize on some positives that came out of a very negative situation. First and foremost, you really need to keep the focus on fun. There's a lot of seriousness out there. You know, whether it was the political landscape, COVID-19, just there's just a black cloud over a lot of stuff over the past year for sure. We need to take a break and capitalize on the fun products that we sell as ice cream vendors. Um, I'm going to share a screen here and kind of go through this with you so you can follow along with me. I just want to make sure everybody can see this. You're going to see how has COVID affected our market, um, kind of what we just went over, ice cream sales over 13%, novelty sales up 16%, and the whys like we talked about. So how do we continue that momentum? Well, first and foremost, keep the focus on the fun. Like I said, it's been a very serious time. Let's take a break, capitalize on the fun products and experience what we provide the community. I want to get more involved in your community. You know, the most successful ice cream stores that we've had in the past have always had a tight involvement in the community. Whether it's through sports teams, charity, religious organizations, um, guerrilla marketing schools, all these type of connections uh, were important to the success of stores. Now's the time to leverage that even more so we can take advantage and capitalize on people being in their community. Whether it's schools, uh, churches, sporting teams, a lot of these teams either haven't been able to play and now are getting back into it this year. Um, schools haven't been there and maybe they're getting back into it this year. If we can take advantage of those opportunities and, and reach out to these, these entities and see, okay, how could we help you um, reinvigorate your program, reinvigorate the school, maybe offer somebody a treat as the kids get back to school, even if they're only in once or twice a week. Utilize your store, your opportunity with the community entities of where you are, are located. And this really is what I call guerrilla marketing. I can give you a whole seminar on this and guerrilla marketing. Um, it's very, very important. You know, with, with, with budgets that we have, we're not going out there and we're not uh, going on TV and radio. It's unnecessary. Really, if we can pound the pavement and get involved in some of these, um, I call them community connectors, whether it's schools, uh, you know, sporting organizations, religious organizations, those are the key. You get involved with the PTA, you get involved with the sports, you get involved in your local or religious organizations. Those three at, at the top of the level will help you make connections in your community. And the communities right now are looking for connections. They're dying for it because a lot of them have been dormant for so long. They're starting to blossom, hopefully even more this spring. So let's take advantage of that. So get more involved in your community. Um, Continuing the momentum, celebrate all those affected. Look, I don't know whether you, you people have been personally affected by COVID-19, either financially or, or uh, emotionally, 
Um, but I'm sure we all know somebody who's been on the front line, who's who's been um, first responder, who's been a business affected. Let's see if we can connect with those people. Let's see if we can uh, try to find a way to uh, help them in some way, whether it's a fundraiser, whether it's a benefit, whether it's, hey, let's let's give some money to uh, a free cone to all nurses out there, teachers, nurses, whatever it is. Think outside the box, get creative and see if we can create, uh, celebrate those that are affected primarily by this pandemic. Um, lastly, to continue the momentum, let's offer some indulgence, some innovation. Uh, what does that mean? <laughs> well, people are looking for new things. You know, people have been kind of uh, hibernating for the last year, let's say. We've been scouring the internet. We're on our phones. We're on our computers. You know, we we have a lot of um, just we're just exacerbated by all this time. So attention is being paid to every little thing and every little detail. Let's take advantage of this exposure. Let's come out with new flavors. Let's come out with innovative things. Let's try new things. The the one positive that I see from my vantage point from from this pandemic when it, when it comes to our industry is. People are willing to try new things. A lot of it is because they're exhausted by everything that they've already had. Like I, I have my kids, you know, they wouldn't try anything, but we've been, we've been kind of, you know, hibernating for so long that it's like, look, we've had this food for so many times. Try this. And I've seen them open their eyes and open their ears and open their senses to a lot of new things. And I think the public and the community is willing to try that as well. Um, if, we allow and if we come up with unique things to do. So that's how we kind of continue the momentum. Let's keep the focus on fun. Let's get more involved in the community. Let's celebrate those who are affected because there are so many affected and continuing to be affected. Let's celebrate their contribution, past, present, and future. And let's offer some indulgence and some innovation to kind of motivate our customer base. So when we look at all these things, the next thing we want to, we want to talk about in, in marketing is are you ready to handle increased exposure and increased business? Uh, in the past, we've given a um, we've given a, a seminar on inside-out marketing, and and what I mean by that is I talked about inside-out marketing. So inside-out marketing means look, I can get people to your store, I can develop promotions, I can develop a lot of things that can get foot traffic to your to your location. But if your store is not ready to accept it, all we did was create a sale. And if you're in the business to create sales, you're not going to be in the business long. You need to be in the business to create customers. That's what gives you longevity. So how do we create customers? Well, we need to look at inside-out marketing, okay? Inside-out marketing means are you ready to handle more business? Number one, first and foremost, are you mobile friendly? So if I look at my phone, if I Google ice cream near me, are you coming up? Are you on Google Maps? Is your website visible? Are you, uh, are you, if somebody's looking to find you, can they find you in your community? Because I guarantee you there's a high percentage of your potential customers that are looking to this, this phone to find who you are and what you do. Okay. So you need to be mobile friendly. Most importantly, just think, okay. If somebody's looking at their phone for ice cream and they're driving around, will they be able to find your store through a Google search, through a map search? And if they're not, they need to be, you need to be. Are you capitalizing on social media? Look, if you have not taken advantage of social media by now, um, I, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> you know, you need to get on it. Um, you're a little late to the, to the, to the party. Now, there's a lot of different social media platforms. It's ever changing. Doing too much is as bad as not doing any at all. Okay, I do have some customers that are, I mean, their social media, they're on so many different platforms, they can't even keep up, right? To me, Facebook and Instagram right now are the best. They're the constants. Instagram is a very visual site. It does have a kind of a more of a wide range of demographic appeal than, than Facebook may. Um, and it, again, it's visual, which is what we're selling. We're selling some visual items. Facebook is also a, a kind of a constant. It obviously hits a different demographic, primarily than Instagram.
but it's a it's a it's a it's a well shared site. It's the kind of the king of social media as we know it, and it really can help you. So I mean, at a minimum, I would do those two, but I wouldn't do too much more. You know, pick and choose depending on your market, your demographic, and what's important to you. Are you training your staff? Your staff has a huge influence and importance on what you can do and what type of sales you're going to experience throughout the course of a season. Are your staff just employees or are they brand ambassadors? Now, tomorrow we're doing a webinar um, on training your staff to be brand ambassadors, so I won't bore you, but the important thing of, of your staff is are they trained well enough to create customers when a sale approaches the window? Understand, when somebody comes to your store, you're, you got the sale, okay? Now, we can maximize the sale. We can upsell. Yes, yeah, great. But how do we create a customer? How do we create return visits? And your staff has a huge impact on that. Are your prices and product in line to the market? All right. Number one, raise your prices, okay? I, 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 customers kind of go back and forth over the course in Q4 we spend a lot of time with customers going over P&Ls and looking at all right what can you do what's important uh, how can you make more money and I always say raise prices and like I can't raise my prices. I can't raise my prices you have to raise your prices I mean we all see what's happening with minimum wage um, we understand your your vendors are going to go up your electric's going to go up your your everything's going to go up you have to raise your prices a quarter does not matter to the consumer for the most part, but it matters to you. Now, some things you may not be able to go up with, but strategically you have to look at the margin of every item so you can making the right amount of money. And then you have to capitalize on trends in the industries, like we talked about innovation, flavors, products. You know, you don't want to be the store that says, uh, somebody comes to the window or walks in and says, oh, you don't have uh, salted caramel pretzel? I had this store down the street, they had salted caramel pretzel, it was unbelievable. I had it down the shore, I had it in another place, another location. You don't have it, and then you get it after the fact. Be ahead of that curve. Be the one that's driving that innovation. If you could do that, then you will create customers and create business for yourself. Um, outside dining options. Outside dining options are huge. Uh, a lot of stores have them. A lot of stores were, were forced from necessity uh, because of COVID, but... Uh, you know, necessity is the mother of, it, of, of, of invention, right? So you have to take advantage of outside dining options. If you don't have them, get them. Because people are still going to feel comfortable eating outside more than inside. And uh, that kind of segues into your COVID precautions. If COVID hopefully continues on a downward trend, that doesn't mean that your precautions should continue on a downward trend. You need to upgrade and maintain your COVID precautions of your store, regardless of what's going on in the world. Until we're confident, until we're 100% confident that COVID, you know, is 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 you know in our rearview mirror per se from a health standpoint, then your store needs to be at the forefront of precautions, masks, sanitation, uh, social distancing. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for that. Now, first and foremost, it's to protect you, your staff, and your customers. And um, additionally, look, we don't know what's going to happen. So if you're on the forefront and staying, you know, you're ahead of any wave that comes. And you got to protect. And, and just from an optic standpoint, it's important for people to see that. Lastly, from an inside out standpoint is, are you proud of your operation? And I always look at you know, the five senses here. Taste, all right? Are you proud of the products that you sell? Have you tasted the quality of your product and what you're selling? Um, smell, <laughs> when, when somebody walks up to your window or walks, what is the aroma? You know, can you look at waffle cones to fill the aroma with waffles? Does it smell clean? Does it? If outside, can you plant flowers where people are looking at it? Um, so that's very, very important. Look, it, it's from the eyes, is it aesthetically pleasing? You know, sometimes from a business owner standpoint, we're so busy working in the business that we forget to work at the business and we don't see. You know, a lot of times, even in my business, 
I'll ask customers or friends or family members, hey, come in, take a look. Take a look at the showroom. What's it look like? Take a look at, you know, what we're doing online. Tell me what you think. Because, you know, we're, we have our blinders on. We're dealing with so many other things that we don't really see. And sometimes it's good to get an outside perspective. Um, sometimes outside perspective, depending on who you're asking, could be opening up a can of worms. But it always helps. It always helps. So, you know, take a look. Step outside, both yourself and involve other people in that to get some feedback. Um, feel and and look, I'm not talking about the wall, but if people feel safe in your environment, um, and not just from a COVID standpoint, but that they feel welcoming at night is a parking lot lit. Do people feel like, hey, I could drop off um, my family, go run an errand? You know, my my 16 year old niece and her friends are always kind of going out and getting ice cream at a local place. They drop them off for 20 minutes. They go run an errand. They pick them up. But they do that because that local local dessert shop makes people feel safe. It's not a scary environment, and that's very very important, um, especially for for stores in in areas that may not be as safe. You know, we want to be well lit. We want we want people to feel welcomed, warm, and safe when they're approaching and when they're at our store. And then here, what do people hear when they walk up to your store or walk in your store? You know, is it music? Is it liveliness? Is the is the atmosphere impressive? Um, it, it's it's very important. So when you look at the five senses, taste, smell, look, feel, hear, you know, the, all those things have to be in line. And if you do that, if you if you look at being mobile friendly, capitalizing on social media, training your staff, having right prices and product, the outside dining options, staying with your COVID precautions, and, and addressing the five senses. Now, as a marketer. I want to flood your store with customers. I want to send everybody because you're not just going to create sales, you're going to create customers. So you know, from now we look at, you know, from a marketing standpoint, okay, how can we, who do we market to? You know, in the ice cream business, there's, there's good and bad. The good part about the ice cream business is everybody eats ice cream, okay? But from a marketing standpoint, oh my God, everybody eats ice cream. How do I, how do I develop a campaign that appeals to everybody? How I develop a campaign that appeals to every demographic, every race, every religion, every creed, everything. It's it's a little daunting, okay? It's it's from a marketer, okay, I, I can really focus on a key demographic, but how do I focus on every demographic? Well, you, you kind of have to cheat a little bit, right? First of all, the millennial crowd and the Gen Z crowd are very, very important. Number one, they represent almost 50% of the population as it stands today. Those two, those two demographics. Millennials and having children. Millennials account for over 35% of retail sales out there and, and Gen Z is about 18%. So they're over 50% of the retail sales, those two demographics. 89% um, of millennials and Gen Zers, they use mobile to, co to connect, okay? so. All right, we understand they're buying a lot. They have a lot of population. We understand how they're connecting. Um, they don't. They have lower brand loyalty, but they connect with experiences. Well, great, because an ice cream store is an experience. Wonderful. The, the key is millennials and Gen Zers have a greater impact on influencing other generations than vice versa. And what that means is if you connect and hook up with the millennials and the Gen Zers, they can help be a brand ambassador and a conduit for you to connect with other demographics, you know, the baby boomers and such. So, and the Gen Xers like myself, you know, we, we sometimes I'm tired of listening to the millennials and Gen Zers, but you know, sometimes they're out there a lot more and, and we do. So connecting with those two demographics, maybe developing to marketing that's a little bit more focused for those two key demographics, can help you springboard a campaign, all right? Starting there is probably the way to go. So, okay, how do we how do we start there? What's that even mean? Well, first and foremost, you gotta you gotta capitalize on this. And what that means is, number one, you gotta start taking money easier. Um, taking money easier is the best way to increase your sales in today's market. I do have some customers that still just want to take cash. Um, and not take credit cards, okay? You know, it's been proven out. I can give you statistic after statistic. Whatever you're paying in merchant fees is dwarfed by the amount your, your business is gonna increase by taking credit cards. It's not, even, it's not even in the same ballpark. 
Now, certain segments don't carry cash, they just carry credit cards. Now, the next segment's not even carrying credit cards, they're doing everything via the phone. So if you start to accept Apple Pay, Google Pay, these type of things that are, you know, people can just kind of show their phone, even creating applications through your business where they can flash their phone and pay, now you can increase visits, increase traffic, increase transactions. Making it easier for somebody to pay is a form of marketing, okay? Because you can market that to give you a succinct advantage over your competition, and customers and consumers will appreciate it, especially the millennials and the Gen Zers who are, you know, that's the next group we're trying to get. Um, circling back to fun, indulgence, social media, those are the type of things that those, those two demographics eat up. So if we can, again, capitalize on those things we mentioned earlier, that will help as well. The other thing that I really want to press upon, and, and look, we have a, you're talking for about a half hour, 40 minutes here. It's a, it's a quick webinar. There's a million things you could do specifically to market your store. I'm trying to give you the hot button items that can have a direct, dramatic impact on your sales. So when we talk about the increased exposure, the, the, the inside out stuff, you notice I didn't talk about really spending a ton of money. There wasn't a lot of money being spent because I don't believe that you spend more to make more in marketing all the time. Um, even taking money easier, those things are not a huge investment. The last thing is not a huge investment either, and it's a huge, it can have a huge impact on your store, and that's getting involved with delivery, apps, and takeout. I've been fighting this battle pre-COVID um, with stores for years. Three years ago, I gave a seminar on getting involved with these delivery apps, and, and the biggest kind of um, pushback from customers when we can't deliver ice cream. What do you mean you can't deliver ice cream? We, we've delivered hot food for years. Guess what? It gets cold. Well, we can protect cold food from getting hot. And let me tell you, you can absolutely deliver ice cream. This year has told us, I had a lot of customers who did it, again, out of necessity because – they couldn't get foot traffic. They couldn't get people to the store, so they got involved with your Uber Eats, um, your your um, the DoorDash, your Grubhubs, because they had to, and they seen 20, 25, 30, 35% increase in sales through these applications. Let me just give you some numbers. I'll bore you with some quick stats. Well, first of all, in July of 2020, 60% of people utilize delivery services for food. That's 65%, a huge number. 60% of U.S. consumers order delivery once per week. Since 2014, digital ordering and delivery has grown 300% times faster than dine-in, okay? And some of these numbers really haven't been flushed out to look at the impact of COVID, you know, and how that's going to last out. So some of these numbers are just going to exponentially grow. 59% of restaurant orders from millennials are takeout or delivery. And in, by 2021, orders placed via smartphone and mobile apps will be a $52 billion industry, billion with a B. So how do we take advantage of this? Well, look, again, first and foremost, you got to get involved. Make the phone call, hook up with these applications. See what um, – they're not all the same in every area. Okay. Some areas are really strong with DoorDash. Some areas are really strong with Uber Eats. Some areas are really strong with Grubhub. Find out for your community what delivery service uh, works best. Okay, the uh, the ordering must be simple and mobile friendly. We, we you know we circle back to an earlier point of being mobile friendly. Build in upsells and specials to the applications. Now you can kind of. Uh, plan some breadcrumbs for your for your customers to grow and upsell and, and create additional sales through these apps. Raise prices to counteract fees. Look, they're going to charge you 20, 25, 30% on top of what you're – raise your price. You, if, you do, if you use these apps now, you know very well that if you go to the restaurant and buy a meal, it's $12. But if you go on DoorDash or one of these services, it's $15. It's just the way it is. The advantage we have is we're not selling $20, $30 items where 30% is another $10. We're selling $4, $5 items. So, you know, 25, 30% is, it's a dollar. Some people don't even know it. People expect to pay a little bit more on these services and you have to counteract those fees. You can't lose that type of margin, right? And streamline your menu if needed. 
if you have a million different flavors, it's hard to put hot fudge on a Sunday and then deliver it, okay? So we have a couple options. We either don't do hot fudge or we put hot fudge in a little side container and deliver it, you know? But you can create uniqueness, innovation, Sundays in a box, um, a lot of different things, but you need to do it. It will help grow sales outside your store. It'll help you capitalize on the millennial and the Gen Z markets, um, which is over 50% of the buying force out there. The other thing about online and, and these services is, look, the biggest hurdle we have as a dessert shop is weather. When it's raining out, when it's really, really cold, people don't come out as much. Well, with these delivery services, you know, weather becomes less of a factor. If your physical location maybe is not ideal, well, with delivery services, that becomes less of an issue. Um, even staffing, you know, hey, we have staff that really works hard and they make stuff, but they take a little bit longer. They really don't have the personality. Well, again, with delivery services, staffing, some staffing troubles become less of an issue. So it can increase our sales. We can we can have some limitations that we had otherwise that and aren't as important when it comes to weather, location, staffing. People are doing it. People are taking advantage of it. And COVID even made it <laughs> rise to the forefront. I apologize. We couldn't share the screen, but I have some and I will um, send everybody who kind of registered the slideshow presentation so you can see some statistics and, and the growth, the exponential growth of some of these entities uh, during COVID. Um, and look, I talked to, we have probably 4,000 ice cream customers. I talk to every one of them every day. No, I don't. But <laughs> we talk to a lot of them. We have some pretty good feedback with them. Uh, the people that jumped on DoorDash and or let me put it this way. There were two segments. There was one that had it before and it was great. And they really, really were ahead of the game. And there were, there were a lot of stores that got involved with it because they had to during COVID. And even they saw just a huge uptick in sales. Uh, now the trick is to do it right. We can certainly help you do it right. But just remember, like I said, a couple key points. We'll keep it simple. Streamline the menu if you have to raise your prices on it. You know, don't get involved with everyone. Make sure you know who, what service in your community is the right service and um, and develop it so you kind of build in some upsells and so you can kind of breadcrumb and, and stanchion customers to spending a little bit more money and maybe even more importantly, trying those innovative products that you can't really get them to try at the window because they're a little more apt to be uh, a little bit more adventurous when they're just buying it on the phone. So, just to kind of put everything in a bow here, you know, we talk about marketing your frozen dessert business. There's not one big thing you can do. It's a collection of little things that really differentiate and create longevity and create success in this business. My most successful customers, number one, first and foremost, are involved in the community. If I had to give you one thing involved in the community, it's a very broad topic and it means a lot of different things to a lot of different communities, but they are involved in the community. Okay. You have to understand we, customers. I, I believe there's a lot of momentum still going on. Ice cream is still going to have a, a bang in year in 2021. Um, but you got to take advantage and leverage it while you can. A customer's attention is fleeting. You, you could spend $10,000 on a billboard and you get three seconds when somebody's driving by it. That's all you get. That's the attention span. Right now, you have you have your community's attention. You have to use it. You have to use it. A lot of the things we talked about in this in this in this seminar, it, it, it gives you the opportunity to use it. Um, so, as as we go through 2021, look. At Century, we're going to continue to kind of update our YouTube channel. We're going to update our website with three-minute tips about some of the stuff we talked about. Uh, we offer anytime you need us, we come out and talk to you about marketing and what your store is specifically. Um, you know, our success is your success. So we're very proud. This is our kind of our this is our 40th year in business, and you know we got that way by understanding the importance of of the customer and. Understand, and, and I want my customers to look the same way, right? Like you need to understand the importance of a customer. It's not a sale. It's, it could be a, a longevity relationship. So um, if anybody has any questions, I'll, I'll go on the chat. I know Angelo has been kind of chatting through here um, with, with Timmy. If anybody else has any questions, you know, throw them up now. If not, you know, we'll, we'll close it out. I want to thank everybody for, for kind of tuning in.
I appreciate the opportunity. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we wish everybody a healthy, happy, safe, and blessed 2021 as we go through this. And uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you very much.